They're one of the most appealing and amusing animals on Earth. Hi, I'm George Page for Nature. Penguins are highly specialized birds, and they're only found south of the equator. Beautifully adapted to their harsh environment, their comical appearance belies their abilities as supreme swimmers and divers. They fly underwater with wings that have evolved into strong, stiff flippers. Their legs are at the end of their bodies where they're most effective as oars and steering devices. And their tails are streamlined triangular rudders. Penguins are beautifully adapted to the harsh, inhospitable conditions of Antarctica. But this is not Antarctica. It's a remarkable man-made environment. The penguin encounter at SeaWorld in San Diego. They keep the temperature constantly below 32 degrees in here and make 12,000 pounds of ice a day to keep these birds comfortable and healthy. Our film is about one of the most social of all penguins, the Adeli, and it was shot in the frigid water and along the icy, rocky shores of the real Antarctica. There are places on Earth that time and even life seem to have forgotten. The temperature plunges to 100 degrees below zero. The cold is pervasive, ever-present, utterly hostile. Over most of the Earth, conditions favor life. Temperatures fluctuate but stay within a livable range. But in this frozen wasteland, there is nothing to spark the special chemistry of life. Antarctica, the South Pole. For half the year, the sun never sets. For the other half, there is constant darkness. The continent is locked in the grip of ice, desolate, sterile. To survive in this forsaken place is the ultimate challenge. There was a time when things were different, once this land lay farther north in warmer latitudes. Forest grew and rivers flowed. There were innumerable animals, and the wilderness sang with bird life. But over millions of years, Antarctica drifted south, and the cold set in. Glaciers buried the continent, and the plants and animals died. Their bones still lie in the frozen rocks. Antarctica became uninhabitable. It was set apart from the rest of the world, its surface sterilized by ice and wind, its shores cut off by frozen seas. Antarctica, it seemed, had defeated the tenacious forces of life. It stood outside the usual rules. But rules are made to be broken. Each spring, a great invasion begins. Millions of small, streamlined creatures leave the icy seas that surround the Antarctic continent. They travel for days, crossing deserts of ice, impervious to the astonishing cold. Cold does not trouble these little voyagers. They're made for it. They're Adelie penguins, icebirds. 
Every year, they emerge from the sea and cross the ice to colonize these remote shores. The males come first in late October, the beginning of spring in Antarctica. Navigating by instinct, they head for a tiny part of the enormous coast. Their navigation is incredibly accurate. Often they arrive at the same patch of stones, the same rude nest they left last year. Now they'll start all over again, not in seclusion like some nesting birds, but as part of a colony of thousands covering many acres of land. These penguins have one overriding purpose, to reproduce. Their greatest problem is a lack of time. The summer here is very short, only eight weeks and the penguins must mate, lay eggs, and raise their young before the coming of winter. There's no time to waste. The males get right to work. Each lays claim to a patch of earth and attempts to attract a female. Some couples remember each other from previous years. These pairs have an advantage. They've courted before and know what to do. But other couples still have a lot to work out. A suitable arrangement is finally established. Eventually, they settle down and finish off their nest of stones. Collecting stones for the nest is a ritual act. The male bonds more closely to the female with each pebble he brings back and presents to her. Brief nuptials are followed immediately by mating. There's no time for a leisurely courtship. Adelis must start their families right away. A thief looking for nest stones. Stones are important because the ground is frozen and there's no other building material. Even a bed of small pebbles will lift the eggs away from the cold ground. It's early November, mid-morning in the long polar day, and the sea ice is breaking up. It moans in protest as the long winter finally comes to an end.
This is the most welcome sound in Antarctica. The sun's rays are feeble but continuous, and slowly the sea ice will succumb. Eventually, the open water, still far away at the edge of the ice, will reach to the edge of the colony. Courtship, mating, and soon after, egg laying. Adelis usually lay two eggs and, with luck, will be able to raise two chicks. Time rules the colony and governs the lives of these icebergs. The first to hatch will have the whole summer to grow and become strong. Late starters will never escape the Antarctic winter. It's been almost a month since the first Adelis arrived, and in all that time, none have fed. The colony is now a hungry place, but the barren surroundings provide nothing except a space to lay eggs. If penguins were able to breed in the sea, they'd be truly aquatic creatures, but like all birds, their eggs need air, and so they nest on land. Once the eggs are laid, the females are free to return to the sea and feed. They're dirty and half-starved, but in a deli style, they do it all together. They hesitate as if afraid of the water. The sea may be their source of food, but it also harbors penguin predators. Hunger overrules caution, though, and they take the plunge. There is safety in numbers, and while it's risky to be the first one in, it's very risky to be the last. Left on land with their mates at sea, the male Adelis brood their eggs. For company, they have other males and the skua. Skuas are relatives of seagulls, but they're bigger and more powerful. Like aerial pirates, the meat-eating skuas prey on the penguin colony. They nest close by on the heights above their intended food supply. Nothing the penguins do escapes the skuas' sharp eyes. For the Adelie males, brooding is a monotonous chore. The endless day stretches on. Confined to the nest, the close-packed birds are restless. Some have already lost their eggs or failed to breed, and their agitated wanderings disturb the others.
In the scuffle, an egg rolls free. Unattended eggs are fair game to the skua. Adelis are quick to attack marauding skuas, but they never succeed in rescuing an egg. Once off the nest, the egg is of no interest to the penguin, but he fiercely defends the remaining egg on his nest. In his zealous pursuit of the skua, he actually crushes his own egg. It's the first week of December and the midnight sun is near its zenith. It's summer and on warmer days, the temperature rises to just above freezing. Ice melts and small plants bloom in the warming sun. A rare greenery comes to Antarctica. Algae, moss and lichen are the only plants that grow here. They're simple and hardy pioneers, like the penguins. Heat is distressing to an iceberg. They can overheat in just 32 degrees. Those who fail to breed or lost their eggs can escape from the nest sitting to cool off in the snow. But there's no respite for the brooding males. They suffer through the unaccustomed heat, turn their eggs, and sit still to conserve their dwindling body fat. It's been five weeks since they came ashore and five weeks since they've eaten. But the eggs are close to hatching, and nothing will dislodge the males. Except the returning females. At speeds reaching 37 miles an hour, they streak through their underwater sky. They race toward shore and emerge from the water like missiles. Excitement mixed with fear drives them. There are leopard seals near the ice edge. And the fast approach is the best way to avoid them. They're sleek and well-fed from their trip to the sea, and beneath each black and white uniform is a reservoir of fat. Each bird remembers her own part of the colony, and within it, the location of her mate. They display, and he shows her the eggs. Two eggs, still intact. He's free to go, but something's wrong. He's not content. Adelis live by ceremony, and reunions call for ceremony. So he finds a stone and takes it to her. Stones are the currency of the colony. 
not only for building nests, but also as tokens of fidelity. Now he can go in search of his favorite food, krill. <laughs> Brooding is nearly over. The females have returned just as the eggs are ready to hatch. the first of 40,000 new penguins in this colony. Like all newborn chicks, they're helpless, as vulnerable as the eggs they hatched from. And like all babies, they need food, shelter, and protection. Life's easy for the skuas now. There are many casualties during the week of hatching, and they won't go to waste. Skuas raid the colony, scavenging for food to feed their own young. The colony has almost doubled, and the Adelis are busy caring for the new generation. The chicks demand food constantly. They will double their weight in a day or two and then double it again, if they get enough food. Both parents must now travel back and forth to feed them. Food is the greatest priority and will remain so from now till summer's end. Out in the bay, the broken pack ice comes and goes driven by the winds and tides. Midsummer in Antarctica. The Earth's southern pole tilts toward the sun, and for a short, deceptive time, life on the continent's barren shores seems to relax. The skuas bathe luxuriously. Beyond the beach, the icebergs wash off the grime of land and cruise by on gently drifting ice. But back at the nest, their responsibilities are growing. It's early January, and the young chicks are still weak and defenseless. At least one parent is always in attendance. Without reserves of body fat and heavy plumage, the chicks are not yet able to stand the cold. They need body heat and frequent feedings. The skua's offspring are hatching as well. Seen from afar, the colony seems small and static, but its individual members are engaged in a race with time, and the deadline is winter.
Before winter closes in, they must be gone. The chicks must be ready to go to sea and are busy turning food into muscle, bone, and fat. Food in this land of ice comes only from the sea, and among birds, penguins are the ultimate fishermen. They're so distinct that their relationship to other birds is uncertain. One thing is clear, however, ice birds take to the water like other birds take to the air. But unlike other fishing birds that make shallow dives for prey found close to the surface, penguins fish in deeper waters. Searching for krill, squid, and fish, Adelis dive 60 feet and more, finding prey beyond the reach of other birds. To exploit the deeper resources, over time their bodies slowly changed. Wings became stiff flippers, feet turned into paddles, feathers into warm, waterproof suits. Unable to fly, they no longer needed to. They were masters of a different realm. Shaped for swimming, they're surprisingly agile on land and frequently hop out of the water to bask on an ice raft. The Weddell seal, it spends its entire life in the Antarctic ice. Weddell seals don't eat penguins. They search for fish beneath the ice using biological sonar. In almost total darkness, they locate their prey diving half a mile under the keels of icebergs. The water is frigid but wonderfully fertile, rich in the nutrients that algae need. And algae, tiny floating plants, are the food of krill, the key to life in Antarctica. Their numbers are staggering, Enormous schools can contain 100 million individuals. Fish, birds, seals, and whales all depend on this vast krill resource. Now three weeks old, most of the chicks have abandoned their nests and come together in creches, groups of chicks under the care of one adult. It's the beginning of their communal life the urge for the company of their own kind that will stay with them throughout their lives. To be late, to be out of step, is the single greatest danger. And to be three weeks late, like this tiny chick, means that no amount of maternal care will swing the odds in its favor. Bigger chicks become bolder. They exercise new muscles and sometimes cause unrest among the colonists. The time of courtship is long past. The chance to mate successfully has gone for another year, but some birds refuse to give up. Birds which have failed in their attempt to breed and young birds practicing for the future continue the rituals. They build new nests and defend their little territories. All the old passions flare again. They court and mate, but no egg laid now could ever survive. Yet all this effort is not in vain. 
A continued claim to a mate and a nest will mean breeding rights next year. The summer heat reaches more than four degrees above freezing, a heat wave in Antarctica. The colony sits and swelters. It takes bare skin to get rid of heat and they don't have much. So on rare warm days, the ice birds start to suffer. They spread their wings and expose as much skin as possible. Panting in the heat, they keep still and wait for chillier weather. And fortunately, cooler weather is always just around the corner. It grows cold, but not for the icebergs. Their body temperature stays the same. Down and feathers and fat are effective insulation. They're comfortable when it's really cold. So little heat leaks out of these downy suits that snow accumulates on them without melting. The skuas must work harder now to feed their broods. They grow more aggressive as they attack the older, more capable chicks. Although they have no talons, skuas have very sharp beaks. They can kill an almost grown chick, but it's a slow and messy business. They've learned to operate in pairs. Two beaks are better than one to bring down an ice bird. They often fail, but potential victims are plentiful, and sooner or later, they'll get the food they need. Skuas commonly hatch twin chicks, but unless there's a steady supply of food, the stronger will kill the weaker. For most of the year, they live on fish. Bare ground for nesting space is so scarce that only a lucky few hold territories in the colony. They are opportunists, like common gulls at a garbage dump. They scavenge dead and injured chicks, which is a service to the colony. They kill some healthy ones as well, but not enough to make any difference in the long run. There are more chicks now than adults, or so it seems. Cresh after cresh, and only a few parents guarding. The rest are at sea trying to catch enough food to satisfy ever-growing appetites. Out in the vast Antarctic Ocean, thousands of penguins hunt in rich, productive waters. Cool, clear, and blue, the icebergs, other environment. Everything they do is communal. Even at sea, they travel together. When their bellies are full, they make their way home, which is no simple thing in the shifting maze of pack ice. But they never get lost. When they first came here, they had to cross great fields of ice. 
Now, during summer, they can swim right up to the shore. Gathered in a crash, the chicks seem identical, but the adults can tell who's who. And the chicks, too, remember their own and rush forward with eager welcome. The need to receive meets the urge to provide. Delivery is usually prompt. But some parents have had enough of the incessant demands. Persistence wins out, and these youngsters eventually get their way. But their parent is slowly weaning them, and they're getting exercise, too. Three chicks are a little too many, even for a skua. They're safe if they stay together. The skua looks for a way to attack, but it's a face-off. Confused, one chick makes a run for it and is rescued just in time. It's the end of January, and even the failed nesters have given up the attempt to breed. Without chicks to raise, it's no concern to them that summer is almost over. Soon, bitter winds will blow down from the mountains of the interior. Winter will steal out from the cold heart of Antarctica to capture the coast once more. The long day will end, and the night will settle in. but it will make no difference in these mountains. There is only ice, earth, and wind. The icebergs will be ready for winter when it comes. And so will most of the chicks. But for the late chicks, time is running out. Danger above and danger ahead. The skuas or the winter. The more mature chicks are nearly fledged, and the skuas' bright-eyed offspring are growing their flight feathers. Adolescence is easier for a skua chick on the edge of a penguin colony. There's plenty of meat, easier to find than fish, which most young skuas are reared on. January is a month of dramatic change for the adolescent icebergs. Oil glands become active, 
and a smooth new suit is assembling itself under the old ragged plumage. Limbs, too, are becoming stronger, though they don't seem to know what they're really for. With the physical changes comes restlessness. New urges are at work, which will soon break up the colony. Instinct drew the Adelis here to this rocky shore, and that instinct has served its purpose. An urge for the sea is beginning to take its place. They move away from their old nest sites down closer to the shoreline. Water, at least in its solid form, begins to attract the youngsters. They conquer icebergs down on the beach. Flying birds have to learn to fly. It marks the end of their juvenile life. The icebergs face a similar task in water. They're uncertain. With a parent nearby, they're still just chicks, begging for food and comfort. Staying on the ice wherever they can, they move farther out and try to avoid deep water. Successful this time, but the moment of truth will come one way or the other. Not ready yet, but soon they'll discover they're able to swim, that water to them is the equivalent of air, their way to escape from winter. Some remain on the borderline, a week behind time. Frantic for food, and this is perhaps their last meal, they may make it, but the odds are against them. Those who will make it are down on the ice at the water's edge, but they hesitate before entering their new, unfamiliar world. The adults can do no more for their young. It's time to abandon the colony. And once they decide to leave, there's no turning back. They set off all together, and for good reason. Adult Adelis are fast, and they know how to deal with danger. But soon the sea will be full of floundering chicks. It's a good time of year for leopard seals. They're gaining confidence, but for some, the edge of the sea is as far as they'll get. The end of their great adventure. The leopard seal exacts a price, but most will escape. They'll survive the seals 
as they survived the colony skuas. Far out on the edge of the ice, the place they were made for, the home they've known, Antarctica, will soon be a trap, and they must leave these familiar shores for a new world. Heads high, decisive at last, they swim toward the horizon. The long summer day is over. The Earth's southern pole tilts away from the sun, and the last running water turns solid. Life and movement are stilled again in the ageless cycle of the Antarctic. Even the ice bird can't remain when the sky turns dark in the winter. Nothing moves on the slope of what was once the colony. The snow will come and cover it. The sea will freeze to the horizon. And beyond the ice, the icebergs will retreat to the open sea, out of winter's reach, till the earth turns again and the sun comes back, bringing spring to Antarctica. Thank you. 